All right, guys, so in the last video, we set up the majority of our environment. We went through and installed Homebrew and RBEMV. Uh, we installed Ruby 2.2.2 and uh, Rails 4.2.3. Um, and we configured Git uh, to work with GitHub. So now I want to take you through a few customization type things. First, let's uh, open up Chrome and uh, search for uh, Sublime Text Terminal Simlink. We're using Sublime Text 3, so I'm gonna do launch Sublime Text 3 from the command line, uh, Oliver Lampkin. Uh, let's check out this uh, post he did. Sublime Text 3 ships with a CLI called Subble. Uh, by default, you can't use this command unless you do some fiddling. All right, so it says first check your path by running echo path. So let's try that. Go back to our terminal. Let's do echo dollar sign path. All right, um, as you can see, user slash local slash bin path is included by default. Got that right here. Okay, so installation. Uh, copy this line and he uses sublime um, instead of subble I actually kind of like that uh, it's not too much harder to type out uh, the full sublime instead of just subble subble uh, confuses me actually so let's do let's test out that it works and do sublime um, tilde slash documents Sweet. So as you can see over here, it opened up the documents folder from the command line, which is fantastic. And say we are in, for example, that test app that we created, cd um, tilde slash, it's in the desktop. So I'm going to go to the desktop and the test app. So now that we're here, I can do sublime dot and open up that entire application inside of sublime text. Fantastic. So that is good. Next thing I want to do is uh, let's clean up Sublime Text because the default theme isn't that great. So what I want to do is search for Sublime Text uh, Package Manager. So if you go to packagecontrol.io, uh, this thing is actually pretty awesome because what it allows you to do is install like themes and um, syntax highlighting and that sort of thing from Sublime Text. So let's see, the simple method of installation is through the Sublime Text console. So control plus tilde, let's go in here, control tilde. All right, so uh, let's just copy all this. Let's see, warning, please do not. Okay, we don't need to do that. Let's uh, paste that in, hit enter. All right, one missing dependency was just installed. Sublime Text should be restarted, okay. Now, I believe if we go under Preferences, uh, we have Package Control installed. And now we should be able to do something like Install Package, hit Enter, and that light loads up. Uh, let me, let's search for a theme. I personally love the uh, Space Gray theme. So it says thanks for installing. Uh, so that's how easy it was. All we had to do is search for it, hit enter, and it installs it for us. Let's see how to activate. Um, let's go to preferences, settings, user, command plus comma on a Mac. Okay, space gray, the default, ocean dark. Okay, so what we need to do is add um, these two lines right here to our uh, Sublime Text settings. So uh, below the ignored packages, I'm just going to add this. And let's save that. Error parsing. Oh, oh um, I believe we need a comma after this. There we go. You can see it already took effect beautiful so you can change it to the light theme if you want 
by doing uh, or the space gray 80s let's see what those look like Eh, that's not my favorite. So I personally like this one. Let's also add some other uh, configurations. So let's do a fonts underscore size um, uh, colon. Let's make it like 22.0 pixels. So 22.0. Save that. Uh, that may be a little large. Let's try 20. Uh, 18. 18 is pretty good. Okay. Um, in addition to that, let's make the default uh, tab size uh, 2. I personally hate the that is uh, 4 by default. Um, and then also, I'm going to set up, let's do word wrap and set that to true by default. All right, that looks good. Let's open up, let's see our application at HTML. So I'm not sure why the sidebar is still, maybe I need to restart it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now the sidebar is uh, matching the rest of the theme. So I would think you agree with me. This is much better looking and much better to work with than the default Sublime Text design. One thing I also want to turn off is the minimap. So if you go to View, um, Hide Minimap, uh, that gets rid of that. All right, so just to rehash, we have uh, linked up the terminal and Sublime Text, which is fantastic. We've set up the package manager and we've installed a beautiful theme, uh, the space gray theme. The last thing I want to show you is uh, something that will change your life if you don't already use it already. It's called Emmet. So it's the essential toolkit for web developers. So if you watch this, you know what, let's just uh, install it and I'll show you how it works. So I, I'm going to search for an Emmet in the package. Here we go. Perfect. So let me, let's go back to Sublime Text. Go to Sublime, Preferences, Package Control. Uh, start typing Install Package and hit Enter. All right, and I'm just going to search for Emmet. Click that and it should install it. Thank you for installing Emmet. Blah, blah, blah. Please restart your... All right. So let's uh, restart that. Do Sublime Text again. Okay. So back in our application.html.erb file, let me show you how this works. So basically, say we want a div with the ID of um, wrapper and the class of home or something. So I would do hashtag wrapper and then dot home and hit tab. And it types all that out for us. So the beautiful thing about Emmet is you can do some uh, fancy stuff, write out huge blocks of code in a very short amount of time. For example, say you want a list with like eight list items and a link to be inside each one. All you would do is ul less than li times eight and then less than a. Hit tab and that uh, prints it out. Whoops, I did lu instead. Let me fix that. Li, and that prints out the entire block, and then all you have to do is go and fill in the stuff that would be different per line. Uh, this, I definitely recommend you going to emmet.io, uh, watch through all the stuff it can do. It is a uh, fantastic tool that I definitely recommend you get to know and start using. All right, guys, one last thing I want to show you. So let's uh, open up the .bash profile. And I want to, well, quickly, let me undo everything we did in this file. All right, and let me close that and the package control. Okay, so inside of here, we have the ability to uh, customize the prompts. So I'm not extremely familiar with the ins and out of how all this works. Pretty much I found this on a website. I think I searched for customize uh, terminal terminal prompt and it was a while ago so I don't remember but uh, just search for that and read through some of the articles you you have a lot of customization options for example coloring um, what it shows and what it doesn't show so you can set it up exactly how you want 
Um, I'm going to do what I have set up on my other system. Um, so I'm going to do PS1 equals, and then I'm going to do uh, opening bracket. I'm just going to type this out. So let me save that and go back to the terminal and let's close it and search iTerm again. So that is almost there, but I seem to have messed something up. So um, let me refer back. Oh, I believe this should be 33, not 003. So let me save that and try again. All right, so now instead of the McKinsey's MacBook Pro, it just has a tilde. And let's uh, CD into the desktop and the test app. And you can see it changes based on whether or what directory you are in, which is awesome. So this is not working. I believe this is to show which Git branch you are on, um, but it's saying the command is not found. So let's search for how to show git branch in terminal prompt. There might be something we need to set up first. So git autocomplete going in bash. So I'd like to blah, blah, blah. Get the git prompt script here, put it somewhere like git prompt. If you want to be all CLI about it, you can just run. Okay, so I'm going to give this a try. Okay, then it says now modify your bash profile in case you new to stuff. And let's go back to the bash profile. And above here, I believe this um, RBM should be the last line. So let's put that down at the bottom. So we're going to source that uh, git prompt.sh file. And I believe that will make the, if you look back, it says now you can add uh, this line right here, the git underscore ps1 prompt in your prompt declaration. So let me try saving that, go back and quit out. Now let's open up iTerm. All right, so we aren't getting that error notification anymore, so that's a good sign. Let's CD into desktop and that test application. Now I'm going to do git init, initialize uh, git repository. Beautiful. So now you can see it says test app, and in parentheses, we're on the master branch. If I do git checkout dash b um, underscore test branch, you can see now it shows the test branch app. Fantastic. All right, guys. Well, I think that is it for part two of this setting up your environment uh, mini series. I hope you enjoyed the customization tips. Um, I know for myself, it definitely makes me more efficient using Emmet, uh, the Sublime Tech Simlink. Um, and it's just better to work in a nicely designed theme. Um, as well as the, the prompt, I think that's much better. It's instead of having uh, McKinsey Child, McKinsey Child MacBook Pro all the way out to here and only having this little room type. Now we just have this little box showing where we're at and what branch we are in. It's fantastic. So until next time, guys, uh, keep on learning.